This is the Aftermarket Radio Network. The phone call from a customer is always the beginning of the relationship. Are you tracking, measuring, and holding your service advisor accountable for every phone call that comes into your business? What is your phone SOP? Do you have a conversion rate for phone opportunities? Hey, it's Carm here, the pioneer of automotive aftermarket podcasts. I'm with Stan Stokes, founder of Iron Fist Consultants, who has created the next level of measurement for service advisors. Hey, thanks to our partners, Apex and Shopware, for providing you this episode. You know, Apex 2022 will build upon the unique dedicated space for the service professional, dedicated as Repair Shop HQ. And inside of Repair Shop HQ is Joe's Garage with 10 working bays and key aftermarket suppliers demonstrating their products and services for you. Plan on being in on the action at Apex, November 1st through the 3rd in Las Vegas. Hey, when you're working on cars, you want to be able to access your tools easily without hassle or clutter. The same goes for managing your shop. Eliminate the clutter of paper ROs with Shopware's digital shop management software. Talk to my friends at catchshopware.com. Hey, welcome Remarkable Results Radio Podcast. Carm Capriato, you know, our legacy is always to continue to bring you no-nonsense content that you can rely on to enhance your own Remarkable Results as we together advance the aftermarket. Good to have you here. I'm with Stan Stokes, the founder and managing partner of Iron Fist Consultants. Hello, Stan. Good afternoon, Carm. Great to see you. Talk to you again. Yeah, thanks, man. Uh, we, we need to tell the audience, we, we spent a lot of time together over the last, like, I think, two months. You came to me with an idea on something, and I was so impressed with it. Uh, but I had to learn more. I, I just kept saying, you know, th- this may be something the audience needs to hear about. And the deeper I got into what you were doing and the kind of expertise you have in the whole uh, communication intelligence industry, and I think that's a tagline of your own company, Iron Fist. But uh, look, uh, you know, we get an opportunity when the phone rings, Stan, to solve a customer problem. And I'm not sure that we all know how good our people at our counters know how to embrace, how to solve, how to bring that customer inside. The other thing that I think is part of the discussion is if we get that opportunity, say we've got a long-term customer and they come in, um, no matter how they made the appointment, and we send them out a, a DVI, we've done a great inspection on their vehicle, how good are we? at selling the needed repairs. We're happy with our revenue. We're happy with our volume. I was at a meeting this morning with independents here in Buffalo, and one shop owner came up to me and he says, Carm, I think this is going to last for 10 years the way it's going. We're having the biggest February ever. So we have such an opportunity to grow and to solidify revenue opportunities. We can't ignore the fact. We can't put blinders on, I believe, Stan, is what I've been learning from you. And not realize what are we leaving on the table? Absolutely. You know, and I think when you think, Carmel, about everybody's always asking, hey, do I have the right person answering the phone? And I would love to just kind of maybe back up a little bit and says, you know, what leads up to that, right? What tools do we have available? How are you using those tools? What's going on in the industry? But more importantly, Carmel, what's happened with consumer behavior, that is impacting business today. And what's happened from a technology perspective that's impacting revenue, that's impacting process, right? So many people separate marketing from operations. Well, we believe that we wanna operationalize the data that all of our marketing and our insight has given us is how do we operationalize that to drive revenue and improve process? And that's what Iron Fist is all about, right? When we talk specifically about, do you have the right person answering the phone? We look at really two key areas to determine that. And first is one, we wanna understand the communication that's taken place between your staff and the customer. We call that communication intelligence. The next thing we want to look at is your staff's ability, right? So how is is Carm the right person to be answering the phone? Well, how do we measure that? How do we determine how do we determine that? And so if your service advisor at the end of the day can meet your expectations, you really want to be able to measure that performance. 
I'm the owner. I'm standing at the counter. I'm listening to my people speak to either a, a cold call who came in through, you know, auto repair near me, even if it was a, a, a legacy customer. And I'm listening. I'm pretty darn happy with what I'm hearing from the inside. OK. And then and then people said, hey, listen, you, you got to start listening to phone calls and, you know, you, you we're going to record them all for you and we're going to work together. And uh, the owner says, no, don't worry about it. Listen, I'll listen to a couple a day. And, you know, and, and I'll see what's going on. And if I'm happy, I don't want to disrupt the apple cart. And, you know, and I think we're getting too scientific today that we cannot ignore the fact that there's even a better way. Absolutely. And and you have the technology today to leverage. The One of the things that we've done, Carm, is we've spent the last six years analyzing a half a million phone calls in this industry. In this industry, automotive repair. Uh, I just, it, it's numbing to think, but it's okay. Numbing to, it is numbing. <laughs> Did you listen yeah. to every one of those? I personally have probably listened to more calls than I ever want to. I, I learned a long time ago, I, I came from a family of entrepreneurs. I've been in sales and marketing and operations and, and business my whole life. And I've learned to make my living on the phone. If you go back just 15 years ago, what's changed is that in the old days, people just drove up to your shop, right? Hey, man, can you fix my car, right? Well, that doesn't happen today, right? If you look at the, the phone is the beginning of the relationship, a new customer is the percentage of people that just drive up to your shop that don't know you, don't know what make you great, don't know anything about you is so small. You're not going to make a living off that. And the percentage of people that are going to go online and book an appointment with you when they haven't talked about you and don't know if you can service the repair needs is very, very small. So we know because we've looked at the stats, right, that the majority of people start the search for auto repair near me on some type of device. And 60% of all searches, 60%, end up with a phone call. We wanted to back up and say, let's first understand what's going on with the consumer and the technology that's changing what's going on in the store. And going back to what you were just saying, Carm, as an owner, what's happened? Well, I used to be able to stand here and observe Carm and Stan's communication of setting up an appointment, addressing his needs, and I could coach and I could monitor that. Well, today, I'm not on the phone call between Stan and Carm. As an owner. So I don't, I might hear what Stan's saying, but I don't hear what the consumer's saying. And so I don't know how to kind of measure that. And then I, I don't know how to build any metrics around it to say, here's my compliance, right? We all know what standard operating procedures are. We build compliance for in center guest experience, but have we really looked at the guest experience on the phone? You can't find value in half the discussion, which would be just listening at the counter. But then when you go and you actually listen to the entire conversation and you don't listen to every single one every day, you may not find the pattern, the good pattern or the bad pattern. Right. And the three things we ask business owners is first thing, let's try to figure out why did the customer choose you to service their repair needs versus someone else? That'd be nice to know. And more importantly, if they didn't choose you, Carm, how's that impacting revenue? And more importantly, your return on investment on your marketing campaigns, because you're spending money to get the phone to ring, right? Got a lot of money. I see guys anywhere from 5 to 15% of their top line every year going to marketing. So we want to know if they didn't pick us, Stan, it was nothing that we, it was nothing that we did, though. Right. It, maybe, maybe not. Yeah, we don't okay. know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. We don't know that. I mean, that's all I'm always saying is that, well, if they didn't choose you, do you know what that number is? And if they didn't choose you, why? And if you know why, you can then build process and measure to improve it. That's really the three things we look at is why do the customer choose you? Number two, if they didn't, how's that impact in revenue? How's that impact in return on investment? And then number three, which is the biggest one is how do you measure and how do you improve it, <laughs> right? I got all this data. What do I do with it, right? What do I do with all this data? And so I think what we've made this so complicated. You know, I've spent years just analyzing the stuff and it, across the board, not just in automotive repair, but across the board, sales organizations where, and, and a lot of people don't like to use the word sales, but I got to build a relationship you're you on phone of trust and transparency before you do anything with me. Is that agreeable? Yeah. That's totally agreeable, right? So if you think about 
what's really interesting when we analyze all these calls and really break it down is that potential customers, Carm, in the automotive repair industry, they're not shoppers. I hear business owners all the time saying, ah, they're just shopping. Right. Well, let me tell you what a shopper is. A shopper is someone that has no intention of buying anything. Hey, honey, let's go shopping. We're just looking. Let's go. Let's go look at some kick kick some tires. Right. Well, I can assure you that nobody gets up in the morning and goes, now, I think my brakes are going to go bad in about six months from now. So I'm going to start doing some research today. I'm going to call about 10 repair shops. I'm going to get a price. I'm going to get all the information. So when my brakes go bad, I know who to call. That doesn't happen, does it? Not in this industry. No, of course, it happens when you hear the noise. Absolutely. So what we've identified is it really comes down to two things. One, a consumer either has a plant or an unplanned service need. A planned service need is my old light change reminders coming on. I'm going to plan that I got to get my old change done next week and I'm going to start calling around. An unplanned, my engine light came on. Uh Uh-oh, what's that mean, right? That's unplanned versus planned. And What usually happens from there is finding a repair center generally starts with them searching, use it on their mobile device, auto repair near me, and I shared the stats of 60% of those search results going to call a facility. Here's what's interesting. Why do you think customers choose one repair center over another? What do you think's happening for me as a consumer to decide to do business with you versus someone else? What do you, what do you think's got to happen for me to book that appointment with you? You reached out, you explained, um, you told me I needed to come in. Uh, I felt warm and friendly. I felt some trust in the beginning. I think I've made decisions spot on a conversation, uh, almost a, 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 a trustworthy conversation. People just have asked me, they've asked me you know, to come in. Yeah, well, here's what we've identified. People are going to book an appointment with the repair center that best addresses their concerns, builds trust, provides assurance, and most importantly, can accommodate them in a timely fashion. That's it. You don't, I, I don't care about anything else. My engine light's on. Can you fix it? And, and if you look at all the conversations as consumers, they always start with, again, we've analyzed all these calls and we've identified consumers only ask two questions that call a repair center. There's only two, believe it or not. How much is and do you fix? Or a story around one of those two scenarios. It's never something else. Do you fix this and how much is it? Or let me tell you what's going on in my car, which gets back to do you fix and how much is, right? And so when we start breaking all this down, we go, man, this is really simple. If we can understand the mechanics of this, we can build process. We can build a procedure to help your, your, you as a business owner make sure that your service advisor is addressing their concerns, book an appointment with them and get them in the door. That's the objective phone call, right? That's it in a nutshell. Now, Everybody kind of knows that, right? If you go back and you look at, well, how is this impacting revenue and how is this impacting return on investment? Okay. So this industry probably within the last eight years has really repair centers are starting to invest marketing dollars. Obviously they're doing that in hopes that they're going to be the one that they call. And with today's industry marketing platforms that are out there, right? They use call tracking tools, right? To measure the number of phone calls from each of these marketing channels. And then they determine if the caller is new and returning and the system can ultimately tell you if that caller arrived for their appointment. And this is what is known as a lead to customer conversion rate. Have you heard that before? Oh, yeah. 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 It's a big industry term. And, and people are like, what does this really mean at the end of the day? Okay. Well, what it means is that if you take the total number of phone calls, which are leads, right? And you divide that by the number of customers that arrived at the center, then you have a lead to customer conversion rate. Now, last year, Iron Fist estimated that the industry has an average less than 30% lead to customer conversion rate. Sounds a little low. Sounds a little low. Now, what do you think that means financially? Well, let me give you some basic numbers on this. Wow, even if you can grow at 10%, it's got to be huge. It's got to be huge. So let's just say that your shop's getting 500 calls a month, Carm. That's 6,000 calls a year, all right? If 30% of those you get in the door, that's 150 customers. Just using some basic math here, right? If your ARO is $300, that's $45,000 in revenue or $540,000 
half a million dollars over 12 months, right? That's, that's not a small potato. 30% is a big number, right? Here's the question. What would a 10% increase mean financially? What we find is a lot of clients, they know that number, but they don't know what that impact would be if they could move it 10%. 10% is nothing. It's right? just math. It's just math. Well, guess what that 10% equates to financially? $180,000. Hey, Carm here. How do you measure compliance to your phone opportunities? Well, keep listening and find out. Carm here. You know, the number one reason shop owners attend Apex is to see the very latest new products and technologies. In my opinion, a close second is the opportunity to meet face-to-face -face with people to discuss issues and new opportunities. Hey, let's not forget how much fun it is to get together with friends in the industry, both old and new. Apex is the one place to see all people, products, services, and technology that affect your business and your profits. Plus, you'll get to participate in the industry's best training while you're there. And don't forget the service professional-focused section Repair Shop HQ. Within this dedicated space, Joe's Garage brings the feel of a working shop to your Apex experience. Besides top training, you'll be in working bays and experiencing new tools, technology, and equipment firsthand. Mark your calendar now to attend Apex 2022, November 1st through the 3rd in Las Vegas. Keep in touch at aapexshow.com. Now, housing is already open. And registration will open May 2nd. Visit aapexshow.com. As much as you love the shop routine you have now, I'll tell you that switching to a cloud-based shop management system will pay off in more ways than you can imagine. Not only will you let go of bad habits that cost you money, you'll free up more time for your techs to fix more cars. Your quotes will be quicker and more accurate, and you'll make more money per part than you ever did before. Hey, we all know time is money, and when you streamline your day, you waste less time on repetitive brain drains. Start fresh by going to your favorite browser and looking up GetShopware.com, and the orange Book a Demo button will set you on a journey for more profit and less stress. You'll never look back on the web at GetShopware.com. In the analysis that I know you do and the calls that you've listened to over all these years, I mean, there's a lot of junk stuff out there, uh, robocalls, you know, stuff. I, are you taking that into account? Yeah. One of the things we learned in listening to these calls is that we don't consider a phone call a lead. A phone call is a phone call. Well, out of that phone call, was this a current customer calling to check on the status of their vehicle? Was this a solicit solicitation? Was it a vendor? We kind of take phone calls and break them down into opportunities. An opportunity is someone that's seeking service. That's it. So I want to measure your conversion rate. The person had an opportunity to car book an appointment with him. And once I know if he booked an appointment with him, did he show up? Now I know my true lead to customer conversion rate because I filtered out all the junk calls. A customer calling to check on their status of vehicle is not a junk call, but that's not an opportunity, is it? I already got that business. As an owner, if I was DIYing this concept, you know, I'd have to listen to every call to find out what my what my uh, lead to customer conversion rate is. I'd have to write down that was a robo call, that was a solicitation call, that was is my car done call, that was hey honey, are you coming home for dinner? What time call? Right. That gets back to why we've seen this thirty percent kind of hovering for the last five years. That 30% has just been sitting there. And everyone, I think, just accepted, oh, this is what it's going to be. And we started asking ourselves, well, first of all, can it be improved? Well, the only way to improve something, Carmen, you just started talking about is you have to first identify what to improve. And then you got to be able to measure the improvement. So if we take back those numbers we were just going over, for CARM as a business owner to get a sense of what's going on with those 6,000 telephone calls, what does that really mean? Well, one, the average telephone call is about three minutes. So it's going to take you somewhere around 210 hours to listen to 70% because 70% didn't come in. You got 30%, but you got 70% that didn't. You got to dig in. You got to dig deep. Okay, got it. Yeah. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to take you 210 hours to listen to those 4,200 calls of the 6,000 total. That's first problem. 
Who's got 210 extra hours? Nobody does. That's 10% of a full-time job. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, about 10%, right? And then the next thing you got to figure out, well, how many of those calls were opportunities to book an appointment? Well, of that 70, how many of that 70% did we really have an opportunity where we could have booked an appointment with them? And how many were not? And that's where we got back. You asking, how do we separate? We got to separate the non-opportunity calls from the opportunity calls. Now, here's the kicker. I've seen people do that, right? They work with coaches and they work with uh, folks that come in and train them and process people. But then we look at, well, if they didn't book an appointment, do you have the knowledge to say where in the conversation could have been redirected to change the outcome to a booked appointment? That takes knowledge, right? That takes an understanding out of a conversation and consumer behavior and understanding how a service advisor speaks and talks and when they do, and when they diagnose and they don't diagnose. You got to be a content expert to do that. Yeah, I think that's a skill. Absolutely. In many cases, there's some natural born service advisors that I, I believe we have on our counters, but the, the service advisor coaching business is big. It's huge. Shops that are investing in it, Stan, are seeing an incredible improvement. The size of order, closed DVI opportunities, and, and just taking that cold call, if you will, and, and making them a customer. Let's take Johnny. Johnny... And we're talking about staff performance. So again, getting back to the, have the right person. First, you got to analyze the calls. That's the hard part. Who's got the time to do that? Number two, you got to have the ability to determine, was this real an opportunity? And where in the conversation can we navigate it? And then the third piece or fourth piece of that is how do you measure progress? So Johnny didn't book an appointment. Why not? Is it getting better or worse? So we got to measure that progress. But you just hit on a big one, what we call staff performance potential. Johnny is a service advisor. And he is awesome. You hired him because he's operationally minded. He understands the process. He understands the business. And when the customer comes in, there's nobody better than Johnny. Johnny's great when they come in the door. But you get Johnny on the phone, customer calls and says, how much is and do you fix? Well, Johnny might start because he's so smart. And he knows so much about the business. He gets into a diagnostic conversation with the customer on the phone. And I can tell you that 99% of the time we start dialing a phone call, one, we're wasting time, two, the percentage of booked appointment goes way down because we confuse the consumer. The consumer very seldom will ask you, how are you going to fix my car? They ask you, can you fix my car? And when can you fix my car? And we misinterpret why and how and if. Johnny has been told by his boss, Carm's the business owner, now look, Johnny, I don't want you giving pricing out over the phone. I don't want you to, here's my procedure. And I need you to kind of focus on this script, if you want to call it. And we know that these are things you don't say on the phone and we don't diag and so on and so on. Then Johnny gets on the phone. Johnny's objective is to book an appointment. Your objective is to get some answers to my question. As a consumer, how much is or do you fix? So if I call and say, how much is a break job? Johnny's been told, don't give out pricing until you schedule an inspection, take a look at the car. We have a conflict between what Johnny's boss told him to do for procedures and the customer asking, how much is that? Well, wouldn't it be great to know if Johnny was hardwired, his personality was a challenge for him to avoid conflict. We all have natural instincts, right? Some people avoid conflict like the plague, right? They put their head in the sand to go on, right? Uh, I don't want to go home with that stress. Yeah, that's right. And so when we start talking about a phone conversations, the personality traits and your natural ability is very different than when you're standing face to face with me and you're in the center. So now I'm taking Johnny, who was great service advisor, great at the desk. And now I'm asking him to be on the phone. That's part of his job. But we're now seeing, wait a minute, I got 30%. What happened to that is 70%. So we start measuring all these different things. And we're, we obviously could talk about it. We can go down a whole different ad, uh, avenue about how to understand behaviors from a service advisor and if that is the right behavior you want on the phone. Uh, Johnny's got great skills face-to-face, -face, but he doesn't on the phone. And we find that out ultimately by either listening to his calls or, you know, ha having some service listen and evaluate or working with a service advisor coach. Is Johnny capable of changing? If we put the training in front and the disciplines in front, I'll bet you he would improve. Well, it depends upon another personality trait. 
Another personality trait is what typically we find service advisor is they're very operationally minded, right? A mechanic, very operationally minded. They want their tools in this box. They want to know where to put this form. They want to know how to use the POS system. The whole thing's an operational process. You got to have process to be able to scale and manage, right? And if Johnny is not given a process on the phone, he's going to have the potential of failing miserable because he's hardwired to say, where's my book? Where's, where's my process book? Where's my SOP? Right? So we find so many shops don't even have an SOP for guest experience on the phone call. That's the first problem. We, we walk into all the time. I, what do you say on the phone? I, I don't know. <laughs> Why don't we start there? Let's define, you know, a good script. Let's let's define a standard operating procedure for guest experience on the phone. Because in the shop, they got it, Carm. We walk in and see. It. I mean, anybody if they've got they got a good business, they got a process, right? They do, and we see it all the time. But they're missing one on this end, and they don't understand how much that's impacting their business. Now, I just kind of gave you those numbers to in, to measure that. Now, here's the other side of the coin, is. You got all these phone calls coming in. You got all this. Now you've got a process. Now you've put together a script. Well, how in the world are you going to measure that? How are you going to measure 500 phone calls if you don't have some technology that's analyzing this phone call, right? And measuring Johnny's performance and saying, okay, Johnny booked an appointment with 40% of his calls. What happened to the other 60%? And can I do that at scale? You know, you take a multi-location shop where they got three or four businesses. You're not talking about thousands and thousands of telephone calls coming in a month. What we've done is we've built a platform that at scale can take all of this content, these telephone calls in, analyze these calls very rapidly and measure Johnny's performance. We can tell you, did he book an appointment? Yes or no. And if he didn't book an appointment, exactly why he didn't book an appointment with a 95 to 98% accuracy. Because of the history that you have, is it is it algorithms? Are you asking, is the software asking questions to find keywords to determine a rating? Yeah, so there's a fancy term out there called artificial intelligence, right? And it's machine learning where you teach a machine to listen for things in a conversation. That technology has been out there for a long time. What we've done is we've leveraged that technology and built it for this industry. Specifically, if Johnny Johnny didn't book an appointment, why did he not book an appointment? That's the uniqueness of what we've done with this platform and this technology to bring it into this industry. As I can tell you, Johnny didn't book an appointment because he wasn't able to agree to appointment time. Or Johnny didn't book the appointment because he never asked for the appointment. Or Johnny didn't book the appointment because the customer needs to have a company tow his car in. (laughs) Or here's a big one. He didn't provide that service, meaning the customer called, do you do body work? No, we we don't do body work. So we can't even provide a service. So it could have been an opportunity, meaning the customer's in market looking for repair service, but you don't do that type of repair. So it falls in generally why you didn't book an appointment in a five, six buckets. You just spiked a huge thing in me, Stan. So uh, Iron Fist is working for me. And I go to you and I say, listen, we've really never concentrated on Euro. How many times are people calling with a Volvo question? And maybe, just maybe, I can use the stats or the data to decide to become a Euro specialist. Is that possible? Absolutely. If you go back to marketing, right, we just use everybody does something online. Right. They build content on the website to promote what they're really good at. They go and they spend money on Google AdWords. So when people type in auto repair near me or transmission repair or alignment, they want their ad to be shown and they want people to come to the website. Well, we know, again, that people do not come to a website and book an appointment if they don't know you. They're not. I'm not. Are you going to book an appointment if you don't know me? You're going to pick up the phone and say, do you fix and how much is one of those two questions? We've been able now to start giving feedback to the marketing campaigns. If the marketing campaign is designed to drive leads and to drive people for looking for automotive repair, specifically, you've now launched a Euro part of your business, wouldn't it be great to know how many people of those Euro calls you're actually booking an appointment with? Because that might be a different animal, right? The guy that owns the Audi might be a little different than me who owns a Tahoe. Understanding maybe that's a different process we've got to take a look at. Maybe that conversation is a little different, that educated buyer a little bit more, as they call them. 
So for the first time, we have those analytics, yeah. But you're right, Stan. I could always ask Johnny and my team on the counter, how many calls are we getting for Euro? Pull the team together and discuss the fact that maybe we need to get some training, get some equipment, and look at, I mean, we've got Volvos inside of our own customer base that we're kind of chasing down the street to someone else. But the calls that are coming in, Johnny, you tell me you had four calls this month. Ooh, the software said we had 20. Because Johnny's not paying attention to that. That's right. Well, here's what's funny. When we go into, and we work with trainers, right? I know a lot of trainers out there. We're, we're not here to, to do training per se. We're here to provide some technology and insight around how to help a trainer be more efficient at consulting uh, their automotive repair shop centers. But one of the things that we have when we assess people, we talk to people, right? I always go into a room with service advisor and I'll walk around and I'll go, tell me what makes this repair center great. Tell me what makes you great. And are you articulating that on the phone call? And then I'll go around and say, tell me about the phone calls you're getting. Now, generally what we remember as humans is we don't remember the good. We remember the bad. Yeah, man, I had this guy call me the other day and he just, I, he just beat me up for price. And, and that's all we remember. So when the owner asks, are we getting any Euro calls? The answer is going to be, oh, yeah, let me tell you about this one. <laughs> he don't remember all the good ones. He doesn't know how to weed out that was a real opportunity because I don't know what an opportunity is. So it's really hard to just quantify and say, yeah, I'll go out and do Euros and I'll invest in all this equipment. If you have no real data that says you can get this many leads and you have the opportunity to book the appointment with this many leads from this channel. If I was doing my confidence script or speech to the customers to, you know, why uh, coming here, it's an important relationship you're starting to build. And here's what we do. We've got, you know, the ASE people, you know, we've been here for so many years. Are you listening for that stuff? Absolutely. But there's timing is everything that gets back to you got to build value, you got to build credibility, but knowing when to leverage that. For example, if I'm calling for an old change, probably doesn't matter if I got an ASC certified technician. It doesn't matter if I have a warranty. So you got to take your value props is what you're talking about, Carm, right? We have warranty. We have financing. We have a shuttle, all those value props, and figure out how to weave that into the conversation when it's relevant. When it's relevant. So you've got to know the, the impact of the job, uh, the, even the customer profile or opportunity is to when you yin and you yang. That's right. And if we can give you that insight, saying, man, golly, you didn't book an appointment. So there's two parts to kind of measuring a phone call. One is, did you book an appointment? Yes or no, period. Whether you booked an appointment or not, were you compliant in the procedures? Procedures are you hired a coaching team, you hired a consultant group like that. And we came in and we built you this, this script, we built you this process. And in that process, we're looking for, did you say your name? Did you say this? Did you say this? Did you say this? That's measuring compliance. So one of the compliance in a conversation is, is did you discuss value of the business? Whether you booked an appointment or not, we got a compliance measurement that says compliance is from zero to 100 percent of these 20 things that we're listening for in the conversation. Were you compliant? Did you say the company name? Did you say your name? Did you ask for the appointment? Now, here's what's very interesting. Not only did you ask the appointment. But did you confirm the appointment? Did you confirm directions? Do you know where we're located? We see so many times, Carm, where the appointment will get booked and the customer will never show up. It's a no-show rate. And you know why? Because they don't tell them where they're located. <laughs> I'm sorry, I fell off my chair. Yeah, I'm not kidding you. It's very common. Because we're on the other end. Like, you got to know where I'm at. You're talking to me on the phone. It's the damn assumption that you're just going to press a button and let Google Maps take you here. Well, a lot of the businesses share the same names, right? You can go drive down the road and see five auto repair centers on, on big roads. And I'm as a consumer, I, I got ADD, right? We all got ADD today. Our phone tell, does everything for us, right? Well, here's what we find. When, when we measure booked appointment conversion rates, we find that the show rate goes up exponentially when we take two extra steps in the conversation. Number one is, let me go ahead and get your vehicle information. You drive X car, and I'm going to put you in the system. I've got you confirmed, Carm, to come in tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock. 
that works for you. Yes. I'm now validating and making a commitment with you. And I'm getting you to say, and I'm also saying, Carm, do you know where we're located? Those two extra steps in the compliance measurement increase the show rate exponentially. And by the way, should I text you our address? And yes, and we're going to send you a confirmation out by email or text. Let me go in. Yeah, you're confirming the appointment and people miss the confirmation process so many times. So there's your 10%. Yeah, there's your right there. That's your 10%. That's right. It was worth having you on the show. We just broke the code. That's right, man. That's right. It's really simple. We've, we've made, you know, this data and technology is all great, but we've, it's so much data, right? It's like, how do you operationalize this stuff? Man, I got a million calls being recorded. How do I operationalize that? How do I use that and leverage it to grow my business, right? These are the little things we're doing, Yeah, you know? It's the right thing to do. I know you brought some extra stats with you. Well, I'm going to add it to the stream. And by the way, if you're listening through audio and you are going to be disappointed that you can't see these these really great charts that Stan has. We're going to put this episode up on our YouTube channel so that you can scale up to maybe the 30-some minute mark so you can see these. So go ahead, Stan. Show us what you got here. So we find a lot of companies, they have call tracking. And the call tracking is measuring how many phone calls you got in. Well, just because you got a phone call doesn't mean it was an opportunity on that call tracking number. So let's say that I've got an ad on Yelp or I've got an ad on Google and that ad's driving to this call tracking number and it's being measured and I'm getting these, you know, uh, let's say in the month of January, I got 147 total calls on that call tracking number. So that graph on the right hand side, this is my January, this is month over month. So what we do is the technology comes in and says, okay, how many total calls came into on this call tracking number or came in collectively? It doesn't matter. And of those 147, how many of them were callers seeking repair service? Well, that's the 125. And how many of those were no opportunities, meaning it was solicitation, it was a current customer calling in to check on the status of their vehicle? Because people will call the same call tracking number back. So what we end up doing is we're now able to measure that the percentage of opportunity in the month of January was 85% of all your phone calls. So that's the first metric we're looking at. Of all your calls, what opportunity percentage did you have? Then the next one takes us into of those opportunities that you didn't, that we didn't classify as an opportunity, what were they? Because owners are always saying, well, what percentage of my business can I not get in the door that you're not really making it an opportunity? Well, those are, you didn't answer the phone, right? It went to voicemail. It was a robocall. It was a vendor. It was a solicitation. It was somebody calling the wrong number. It got disconnected or a customer in service. So this is what we kind of categorize, Carm, as no opportunity calls, right? And so we give you that insight and that kind of helps measure when you start looking at your return on investment, well, if I'm getting 30, 40% junk calls, maybe I want to tweak up that campaign a little bit. And then we take a look at, well, of these opportunities, now these are leads, right? Opportunity is a lead and it's an opportunity to book an appointment because you cannot repair someone's call on the phone. You got to book an appointment. So this takes of those 125 opportunities in January, we measured that the outcome of that conversation we heard Johnny say, I have you confirmed at this date and time. That is a booked appointment. So we know that Johnny, out of his 125 calls, he booked 36 appointments. So he had a booked appointment conversion rate of 29%. Now, here's what's really interesting. The question we get all the time, Carm, was, well, Stan, what happened to the other 110 telephone calls that were opportunities? Why did he not book those appointments? That's what a coach wants to know. That's what a trainer wants to know. That's what Johnny wants to know, right? Well, we could come down and we could see that he didn't book those appointments because 51 of them, he couldn't agree to an appointment time. That happens all the time. Hey, my engine light's on. Can I bring my car down? I'm sorry. We're all booked up today. There's no way I can book your appointment. You want to bring it in right now. Believe it or not, Carm, that is the highest percentage of why people are unable to book an appointment. They're not able to agree to appointment time. Well, you know, we are in a tough spot right now where, I mean, some of the top shops are so darn busy, Stan. This shows us that we need more people. We need an extra bay or two, or maybe we have an opportunity to grow. Maybe we should reduce spending money to drive that lead if we can't accommodate them. 
Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. If I'm spending three, four thousand dollars a month at 60, 70 percent, I can't book an appointment with and I can't change. I can't open up more bays. I can't hire more people. We know we're in a in a tizzy with staffing issues right now. I deal with it every day. Shops will say, I can't get the techs in here. So I don't know if I need to back up my marketing spend. Well, if I have this inside, I can answer that question, can I? When we start peeling the onion back and now we can go to a trainer or we can go through an operator and we say, hey, out of all the phone calls Johnny took, each individual person took at the center because we can identify who's answering the phone. We know who answered the phone. We know collectively as a team or an individual. We now can drill down and go to a trainer. Let's take some of the folks that do training and do coaching and say, hey, instead of you listening to 127 phone calls, how about I just give you the ones that we weren't able to book an appointment with so you can coach the team to see if it was an opportunity in the conversation that could have been redirected. That's a coaching tool. I think you were saying no appointment offered to, to 21 calls, and we would want to dig into just those 21 calls. And, and I'll give you a perfect example. Caller comes in and says, hey, I need to get my, my tires rotated. Can I, can I bring it in tomorrow? No, we're all booked out. Okay, thank you. Well, you're right. From a scoring perspective, you couldn't agree to an appointment time. But from a coaching perspective, did you give the customer an alternative? Did you ask if he would like a shuttle, if he'd need a ride back? You got a shuttle service. The point to me is if the right person's on the counter and they were an opportunity thinker. Right. And, and they were a person who loves people, wants to wants to help solve problems. There's, you know, it's, it's not hard to find people like that. They would say, hey, um, it doesn't look like today. However... And then, and then there's all your other, the, the loaner car, you know, how does your Thursday look? You keep the conversation going until you accommodate the customer. That's right. And that's a coaching tool, right? That's coaching. The technology is never going to be able to, all we're doing is bringing the data to you. You got to first have the data and know what to do with it. And that, that's what this, this problem is solving. Well, uh, I love it. I think it's a slam dunk. Anybody who wants to grow their business and recognize that counter, that team, they're revenue generators. Yeah, I, I get it. Uh, we're doing DVI. We're doing inspections. The revenue generators at the counter are just as important as the quality of the DVI and, and, and the tech communication from back of shop to front of shop. And there's two pieces to this puzzle. Now that I know the book deployment conversion rate, the next step is... Okay, Johnny booked 22 appointments. Did those appointments show up? Now, that is my show rate. That ultimately leads to the thing that we started with, lead to customer conversion rate. So we're now able to go in and say, what POS system is there? The phone number that Carm called from, did that phone number show up in the POS? And if it did, was it new? Was it returning? And what was the revenue amount? So now we're able to start connecting the return on investment back to the call. That's the full circle. I don't measure the call. Am I booking an appointment? Is that appointment showing? And what was the revenue made from it? What was the insight coming out of those calls that I can leverage? And then the last piece is whether you booked an appointment or not, I've got a compliance and I have a standard. And my standard as an owner is I want you to say these things on the phone call. Thank you for calling. My name is blah, 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 blah. Did you book an appointment? Did you follow the procedure? That's the second piece of the puzzle is measuring that compliance. We have the ability to go in and say, okay, if you did go and do compliance, compliance could be you had a welcoming tone, you provided your name, you got the customer's name, you took ownership, you, you, you finished the call politely. Those are key performance indicators that we're measuring your compliance score. So we see a direct correlation between following procedure and book deployment conversion rate. These two go hand in hand. So you've brought a coach in. You brought a company in to build you process, to, uh, to, to write out the things you want to measure, and you want to make sure it's happening on the phone, correct? So what our platform does, it is allows you to say, here is my compliance, my SOP. I want to measure if my team is compliant to it. It's just like DVI, right? It measures all these great things. We're now measuring the compliance of the phone conversation. So I can sit here and look at Johnny out of his 59 calls. He had a compliance score of 75. Well, what does that mean? That means 98% of the time he had a welcoming tone. 98% of the time he provided his name, the company name. He provided, he got the customer's name, right? He took ownership. Ownership is huge, right? He 
into the call politely. So those are just examples of, of compliance indicators that we measure. It's the new way to uh, manage our counter, to bring accountability to the people that we hire that are in the face of the customer. Uh, I, I can't see, to me, uh, every top shop that I know has digital vehicle inspection, and there's still so many naysayers out there that uh, you know, need to upgrade their point of sale system and need to adopt DVI. But to me, this is the next frontier. Right. Now, with DVI, it's a little different because I'm not booking an appointment. With DVI, and this is where consumer behavior and technology has really shifted. What's happened with consumers and DVI is I no longer need to come into your, your shop to do business with you. I can drop my car off. You're then going to send me a digital health inspection report with some recommendations, with some great pictures that provides transparency. We know the value of digital inspection systems. But the conversation is now on the phone. Again, I'm now calling the customer to go over the vehicle health inspection report or the customer's calling back the shop. Now I'm looking for different types of key performance indicator. How many recommendations were made, right? So the DVI system says, on average, you're giving out eight recommendations. Well, is Johnny reviewing all eight recommendations or is Johnny only reviewing two? The digital vehicle inspection tool has been able to take us up to new levels we never thought existed. Great pictures, uh, you know, safety and reliability. And so you've got some accountability coming back from the back of the shop as to this is the job that they need to do. Now, the closer at the counter, uh, we've got to find out, can they actually then sell the opportunity? And as much as, yes, the, the sales trainers are there to help to listen to the recorded calls, what you're showing me here, if it's a new industry standard or this whole compliance piece, I think it goes to a, a level we haven't really thought deeply about. Right. Well, every shop has their value props. And if you're one of your, you have a shuttle, you probably want to make sure that's getting discussed in the conversation, right? Because it builds value. And so that's a compliance. Hey, I want Johnny to make sure he's leveraging when it makes sense in the conversation. Well, how do I measure that? And that's what this is doing is it's measuring that compliance, whatever the compliance is. Compliance is I'm calling you back to go over your digital vehicle inspection help report. That's a set of different compliances. It's still going to measure it. And from a DVI perspective, it's looking at, well, did you approve this work? It's not booking an appointment anymore. It's did you did you approve the recommendations we made? What percentage of those? Yeah. I would love to have you back, and, and I'd love to have you back with someone who's actually, maybe there's a trainer, maybe there's a, a, a pure customer who has literally taken this information and done things with it and have has seen the improvement to their business. It would be great to do a, a real-world follow-up. Sure. Be delighted to, Carm. Any way I can help you and, and help uh, educate your, your listeners, you know, that's what Iron Fist is all about. And I think my, our listener sitting here says, wow, this is really cool. I like this. Um, okay. <clears throat> is this smoke and mirrors? I do not believe so. I do believe that if anyone was listening, God, I'd love to know that information. And all they could do is, you know, press a button or three. <laughs> and, and I know it's not that easy. I get that. It actually is. It, it actually is. The plug-in and the technology plugs right into any system. If you've got call tracking, it plugs right into it. So what, what we need to do is we need to do a real world follow up on this. Get the testimonial. I mean, we love to have shop owners on, sales trainers on, coaches on, technicians on to talk about their world and their world according to how do we improve our revenue? How do we sell more product? How do we coach the process and the procedure and the and the phone etiquette and, and all that stuff? And and have you know, you, you could maybe just sit on the sidelines and let them tell the story. You know, you gotta be here because, you know, you're working with these people and and I'm sure you can help guide the conversation. Uh, this was great. I, I learned a lot. Again, I, I learned even more today than I've learned in the past, just hanging out with you and, and learning what it is that you do. And we're here to advance the aftermarket. If we weren't telling this story to, you know, the North American audience, it maybe would take them years to figure this out. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, Stan Stokes, founder and managing partner of Iron Fist. Uh, man, you, you, you got the data, baby. You're a data guy. <laughs> yes, we are. We, we do not operate on hunches. That's right. We, we do not operate on hunches. We, we, act, we operate on, on the data. And that's 90% of what we do is analyzing the data because businesses don't have time to analyze it. 
So st- stop the feel good, get the data, improve your business. Yeah. Thanks for being on board to listen and learn from the premier automotive aftermarket podcast. Until next time. 